Welcome back, Aces people, and uh, it's time for another video, and today we are getting into our kill shot video. We're going to be doing the, let's see, the kill shot throttle body, the trans control and how it hooks up, some basic tuning stuff, some handheld stuff. We're going to do time and control with our ignition box as well. Now, as you can see right here, we've got ourselves a nice S10 with a small block in it. I didn't build this one. Somebody built it, and it's our special guest today. So... With this, in the spirit of doing it for the people, I actually brought a real person with me that put this truck together, and he's going to continue to build it. So he's going to be doing the install for me. I'm just giving a, a little bit of guidance and education for both him and for you, the people. So let's kind of get into it. Let me introduce you to Caleb. Hey, guys. What's going on? I just want to tell you about my truck. Uh, I got a 350 small block in here. Now, I got a carburetor, but I want to switch it to EFI. And and we're going to do a transmission controller too. And I got 4L60E in it. Yeah. How I got how I got the truck is I went to a Napa Auto Parts store. And, I, and uh, it sat, sat there for years and years. And uh, we asked the lady, can, can we try to buy that truck from you? And uh, I got, we, she asked and we asked for the price. And uh, we got it for 250 bucks. And we, I brought it home and I just, and I kind of cleaned it up. It set for a year, and I built the motor when it set for a year. I built the motor, and I put the motor in, and uh, it was carbureted for a carburetor, and it's carbureted now. But I won't put EFI on it, and we'll have fun with it. All right, so we're just about ready to start the tear down on this truck. Uh, I'm excited. I think he's excited. I'm handing him wrenches. Hold the flashlight for me. You know, all the all that good stuff. But the thing is, we got to tear it down. We're going to find Top Dead Center, and we're going to start our install. Well, he's going to start the install. I'm just here, the encyclopedia of fuel injection. So I just want to show you what it's like. It's really not that bad. I mean, it's easy. And we're going to do the most that we can do with this system on this truck and this combination because it's really not hard. That's a few wires and a bit of setup. He's going to be doing it. Awesome, yeah. right? So hang in there with us. So we're in the middle of this disassembly process. I even got my hat in this serious position for working under the hood of a Chevy, obviously. Um, this spark plug is wet. It's wetter than the rain outside. This thing's got so much fuel. It's another reason that we're, we're getting rid of this old carburetor, which, you know, a properly adjusted carburetor from a good brand. Don't get me wrong. It's a great carburetor, but we're going to go with a modern fuel injection because we want to be able to tune this thing up real good. We want to make it efficient and powerful and just a full suite of plug a laptop in, a couple numbers later, all of a sudden, you're either getting good gas mileage or you're just destroying a set of $400 tires. So, a little bit rich. We'll keep going with it though. Okay, so we've got to the point we took a bunch of stuff apart and we found some wiring issues and other various things, but there's some housekeeping things you want to do when you're doing these installs. If you're tearing your old carburetor off and you, you already had a, a high roller on there and this one had the trans control and all that, there's some things you want to keep in mind. One, the switch 12 volt wire for the ignition, you can't share them because those are just little logic triggers inside. So even if you turn your key off and you're sharing those wires, like one system will keep the other system on. And it'll give you a headache because you're like, why don't it turn off? And then you realize that you're sharing power there and it's, it's just kind of back feeds and it's real weird. But don't do that. If you need to, isolate it with a relay or use our power distribution module that he will be putting on after we're done with this install. We just don't, we're just trying to get everything in here and he's got to figure out where to do the wiring on that himself. 
but it'll allow for one switch volt in, which can be dirty, filters it with a thousand milliamp inside, and then I have three outputs that you can run a Hall Effect distributor. You can run your uh, high roller if you want to, your trans control module, or your ECU, or what, whatever combination you're running. You got options of three of them right there, and it'll be good, clean switch 12 volt output there. So, also another thing I noticed on uh, on this uh, tear apart situation was uh, the power for the high roller wasn't going exactly to the battery. We, we want to do that. We want to hook them directly to the battery with any systems that helps the, the capacitance of the battery helps filter out any kind of bad transient voltages. So it helps protect your ECU for a long run. Now this didn't have any problems because there's there wasn't really any dirty voltage on it, but you want to go with the ultimate protection. I mean, direct to the batteries you can. If you can get a battery with a side and top post with like the boat terminals on top, you're looking real good for that. So, but yeah, we got it apart. You want to do some stuff if you're going to store it overnight like we're going to. You want to throw some painter's tape over top of that intake hole so nothing falls down in it. Or you don't get no critters down in there. I've had some mice build a nest overnight before. So, yeah, right now we got a shop rag in there. We'll put some tape over it later, pull the shop rag out, etc. But, yeah, don't leave anything in the intake because a lot of people, they'll forget the rag in the intake. They'll crank that thing up and you'll have two cylinders disappear real fast. Don't do that. You can see we're even using this linkage style right here. It's pretty excited about that. Low maintenance, just bolts right on, looks real good. So yeah, we're gonna be uh, finding top dead center on the engine itself. We're gonna be putting the distributor in 15 degrees. Uh, we'll show you a little bit of math on that, good balancer math, um, and then start start the install. And real heavy focus on uh, getting the install done, some wiring practices, and the biggest, the biggest thing, what is it? The fuel system, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The fuel system is going to be the monster of this one. Everything else is real easy, but the fuel system, it's like a 7 PSI pump. So we're going to update that to our inline 255 and get a little bit more into how we got it laid out and what we had to do. But yeah, we're, we're stripped down now. We're going to go back together. So let's get to it. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. This is day two. Uh, we could have done it all in one day, but honestly... You know, when you're doing a project with a camera and other people, there's a lot to go over. So we're just easing through it. And now we're getting into the part where we start putting stuff back together. There's still a few more small maintenance items we need to handle. Like on this intake right here, you can see our, I mean, we got this throttle body that's laid on here. We're trying to like make sure that uh, the linkage geometry is looking good and not too bound up back there. There's no crazy wiring stuff going on. One thing we notice is these studs right, right here. These things will only take about a half a thread because all the threads, this thing's been a very used old school Victor Junior intake. Great unit, don't get me wrong, but the threads have been damaged in here. So we're going to have to chase these so these studs go in appropriately, and then we can throw the throttle body on there. Up next on our list, we're going to drop the distributor in and start talking about some spark plug wires, and then we're going to get into bolting down the throttle body and making, making sure everything is uh, looking good and feeling good. So we'll chase these threads. Nothing too crazy there. We're going to run a tap through there, make sure we don't get metal shavings down the intake, set the distributor in, and uh, we'll go from there. So check back in in a second. All right, so we're back. I did a little bit of maintenance. Well, I didn't do a little bit of maintenance. Maintenance was done. So we re-threaded the intake, did a thing. And speaking of threads, on the bottom of the intake, uh, on the bottom of the intake side of this kill shot, there's a little threaded port which takes this little guy right here, right? If you are running a blow through or a NA application, no boost, don't put it in. If you're running a supercharger, this goes in. You insert it, a little bit of Loctite, stake around it, however you want it to do, so it doesn't exit the throttle body and go into your engine. But you wanna make sure on an NA or a blow through application, this does not have anything in it. Well, I get a lot of people on the tech side, they'll put this little plug in there and say, I did it like the instructions, but they didn't read the whole line above it that said for supercharged draw through application only. Just a little food for thought. If you're hurrying through it, make sure at least you don't put that thing in there. This is something, like I said, NA or blow through, you can go ahead and just forget about it. Just keep it in the bag, keep it for another project. It's really neat. Um, but yeah, you know, just a little food for thought on that. It's just, these videos are meant to cover some of the stuff that I've seen people do during the installs. Uh, that set's funny there. It's fine. It's fine. But yeah, we went ahead and used our 5 16 by 18, I believe it was, uh, tap. We re-threaded the top of our intake, which was previously them. It just seems like every one of these kill shot videos we do, and we're always running a tap through the top of the intake. I think the last one we did the same thing in. 
but it's fine. Sometimes you want to chase your threads and make sure the holes are nice and free and clear and there's no issue so that when you put those studs in there, it's actually going to hold the thing on there. Sometimes people will get stripped out studs that you'll have an intake leak. IAC will be crazy. It'll be fueling and whistling and carrying on. So just make sure you, the studs you're installing are, are nice and clean threads and nothing weird. You don't have to helicoil it or something like that. But if you need to, you just have to. Anyways, let's go put a distributor in. All right, so we got ourselves an AD2011 Magnetic Small Block Chevy Distributor. This isn't our gasket. We're going to reuse the, uh, actually, we might use our gasket. This one's been chewed up a little bit. See, it's got a little bit of damage. Probably going to leak there, so I'm, I'm probably need to swap that gasket. This one's already been locked out. So we've taken all the guts off the top of it. We, we took off the top. I've got oily. It is what it is. But we removed the springs and counterweights and everything. We've pulled the pin out of the bottom of this. We, I made a whole video on this whole deal about, you know, locking one of these out. You knock the pin out, you pull the gear off, you pull the center up, rotate it 180, stick it back in, and then you uh, put it through the one tiny hole and go ahead and put the nut on there. Now you can do it like this and put that spacer on, really just depending on what your setup is. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. You want to make sure you got, you know, good, decent clearance from the paddle wheels to the sensor itself. Our engine's already been rotated over to 15 degrees before top dead center. Uh, there is a whole mess of math you can do. It's really not bad. It's actually really easy. But you can do the math and figure out what true top dead center is. Do the math to figure out the measurement from what top dead center is over to your 15 degrees before top dead center and get your engine like really lined up. And then when you align this and install it, you know that it's like you're really, really close. So then you're just like really good for startup at that point because you're going to be within a degree or two, depending on like timing chain slop and gear wear and a few other factors. But yeah, so got a locked out distributor. It's looking good. Nothing's loose or weird. It's not doing nothing funny. I'm going to swap this gasket that's damaged out for a good one. We have a new distributor for this, but this one's already locked out, and we figured we'd just save you the headache because there'll be a whole other video about locking out these different styles that we're going to be putting out as well. If it's a Ford or a Mopar or what have you not, we're going to be doing that for you. Anyways, yeah, so let's, let's drop the thing in. Let me get a gasket. So... We're back. We've been doing a little bit of maintenance. Uh, pro tip, if you'll be working in a dusty garage and be on camera, don't wear all black at all. It's bad. Apparently, I've gotten dirty. I've gotten dirty, and I'm supposed to get dirty in this film. But Caleb over here, we did about an hours long course on just locking out the distributor, which I'll make a supplementary video on that. As you guys know, there's one on my channel, but we'll make one for Aces that's going to be like a lot more of the variety of the uh, distributors we got and how to lock them out and all that. But um, yeah, we got the distributor in. The engine is rotated over to 15 degrees. We got the paddle wheel lined up. We're pointing at number one. We're looking good. We got to throw a little gasket on there. You can have that. We're going to set a throttle body on there. Um, and well, let's see what else. We need to make some plug wires. We got a box of the ACES plug wires here. These are Let's see, let's see, 90 degree ceramic boots because of the ram horn style headers this thing got on there. Real cool vintage stuff if you guys know much about old small blocks. Um, yeah, so these old things right here, let's see, where's the open side on this box? These are nice. They're 50 ohms per foot, they're ceramic ends, and they're not pre-terminated. There we go. Not pre-terminated, but it does come with all the ends. And I've got some of the, uh, the special spark plug. Oh, man, I've got a Go Faster sticker. That's five horsepower right there. Um, we got some of the old school uh, crimpers. I got some uh, spark plug boot crimpers. I'll show you guys those. Don't mind what brand is on them. They're very good quality. But these right here, look at that. We can select how long we want these things. They're really nice, good for high temperature. They're a silicone ceramic boot, 50 ohm per foot. Nice. They even say Aces on there. That's worth something, right? So we're going to lay them out nice and clean. We want this engine bay to look really good. That's why we went with these, these uh, black and ceramic ones. Uh, we just want to make it look real good. So we're going to go through here shortly after we get our, our length and talk about a little bit of spark plug wire facts and the best way to crimp them. If you got the tooling, if not, you can just kind of improvise. You guys know what I mean? So let's... Uh, Let's bolt this throttle body down right fast and start laying out some plug wires. Make it real nice and clean. This is going to be great. 
Yeah, so as we're bolting this on, we're realizing a couple interesting things. The, stud that comes, the studs that come with the kit doesn't exactly give us enough stud on this side to put this bracket on without going with a longer stud. Luckily, these studs are available at the auto parts store, so I can just go get some slightly longer ones, and then we'll be set in. So when you guys see longer studs, it's not Hollywood magic. We literally just went down to the local auto parts store and bought a, a pack of longer studs. No worries. But yeah, that's what we're contending with there. But e even for right now, we can go ahead and get this thing bolted down to seal up the engine officially, and then we just deal with that here just later. No biggie. But yeah, look at that, man. Isn't that a beauty?